Have you been trying to get a job and you have the same qualifications as someone else, but they ultimately got the job? What was the difference? Well, I studied the job search journeys of thousands of product managers as the CEO of Intelligent Product Manager. And I can tell you with confidence that it was most likely some hidden, insidious mental challenges that you might not have been considered. Now, I want to be clear. When I tell people anything about mental challenges, psychology, mindset, they think it's the same meditate and be positive crap that most people are selling you. No, these things are insidious, they're hiding in plain sight, yet you might not have seen them. Stay tuned to know exactly what it is and especially wait for point number five because it is probably the most overlooked factor because it seems so dramatically simple. So let's dive in with something you might already be aware of. Your game day performance is 90% mental. Let's take your favorite sports. I'm going to take cricket. You know, on one hand, we have a eternal optimist who believes I can win. I have the skills and the experience to win. I can learn the skills and experience to win. And even if I lose, I know I will have more chances. And on the other hand, we have live sucksy pants. Oh gosh, I hope I don't If I do, what will happen? Now, which one are you? Definitely leave it in the comments below. But who do you think will perform on the big stage? Let's hear from my cricketer, Jaspreet Bumrah, who just performed amazingly well at some of the biggest stages recently. I don't, I don't look at it like that because, you know, whenever I'm at my peak mindset, I think of one ball at a time and one over at a time. If I think of the overall picture too early, I give on to the pressure and I try too hard sometimes. So, this was what was working for me today. Yes, obviously emotions can take over and was taking over, but you had to keep yourself in check. But now the job is done, the emotions can come out and you can, you know, scream and shout. Now, let's imagine you have an interview with Google. That's the big stage. All the preparation does not matter if you go in with your mental state as a mess. You literally use half your brain if your state is not good. One of the world's top most professional development coaches, Tony Robbins, or as I call him TR, always says, state before strategy. Before you get to try to do something, get in the right mental state. Building your mental state before you decide to take on an action and your performance is 10x better than just going in nilly willy. This is why we work so extensively on game day preparation during our program, the intentional job search. Now, a lot of people instinctively get it, yet they're gonna miss out on another critical aspect. And there's a science behind it. So let's dig into the science. And that's the science of mirror neurons, or as we call it, the impact of mirror neurons in interviews. Let's talk about mirror neurons, shall we? What? What the f is that? Well, mirror neurons are a type of brain cell that respond equally when we perform an action and when we observe somebody else performing the same action. These neurons play a significant role in social interactions by helping us understand and empathize with others. So far, mirror neurons have been found only in these, these animals called macaques. I don't even know how to say that. Humans, songbirds, and my cat Sherlock. Now, what do these fantastic things do? Well, four things. Number one, they're responsible for emotional contagion. Mirror neurons facilitate emotional contagion where your emotions can be mirrored by those around you. In an interview, if you feel confident and enthusiastic, the interviewer is likely to pick up on those emotions and feel similarly. Conversely, if you feel anxious or unsure, the interviewer might sense that as well. Basically, if you're upbeat, optimistic, confident, so will your interviewer be. Second is nonverbal communication. Your body language, facial expressions, tone of voice can influence the interviewer's perception of you. Positive, non-verbal crews can make the interviewer feel at ease and engaged, potentially leading to a more favorable rating. Number three, very importantly, creating a connection or what we call rapport. When you exhibit positive emotions and confidence, it can help build rapport with the interviewer. Now, this connection can enhance their overall impression of you and increase your chances of leaving a positive impact. 
Number four, impact on ratings. Interview ratings are subjective. Repeat after me. Interview ratings are subjective. Anchor it in. Put it in the comments. Interview ratings are subjective. And how the interviewer feels during the interaction can affect can dramatically affect their evaluation of your performance. Now, by managing your own emotions and projecting confidence, you can positively influence the interviewer's feelings, which may lead to higher ratings. In fact, I'm pretty sure it will. Repeat after me, interviewers are humans. They're not perfect machines that will evaluate your results, that will evaluate your answers and get back a perfect result. They're not chat GPT or Gemini even if they work for Google. <laughs> Understand the role of mirror neurons or understanding the role of mirror neurons can help you better prepare for interviews. Focus on cultivating positive emotions, maintaining confident body language and building a connection with the interviewer. And now by doing so, you will create a favorable impression and increase your chances of success. But if you stop there, it would be a massive problem because you miss on another critical aspect of your mental strength that affects you well before you step into the interview room. And look, here's what happens. Most, time, most times when people hear about it, they start to tune it out as, oh, I've heard it before. But really pay attention because there's many, many subtle points here that you might miss. And that point is the preparation killer monster. Let's say you decide you're going to land a job in, at Amazon in three months. You set up your schedule, you decide what steps you want to take, you start preparation, yet you find yourself procrastinating. And this totally came out of nowhere. Every week you fall behind on your milestones. And when you get to your desk, you would rather do anything. And you suddenly remember something important you might order from in, in, in Amazon.com and that's in the moment seems more important than writing your stories or building your narrative or preparing your interview answers right then. And if you don't do this Amazon.com order right now, the world will fall apart. That's what it feels like to you. This is the monster. See, I'm no stranger to seeing people procrastinate on their preparation. We have many people pay us tons of money to guide them on their job search. And then they, they don't get started on the first step for months. Or they procrastinate on step two for months. This preparation killer monster strikes hundreds of my clients and we have a lot of work to do or we have to do a lot of work to overcome it. We've built countless routines to figure out when this monster is rearing its head and kill it right there and then. But why does it happen? Well, your brain is making calculated decisions even if it doesn't seem like it. If you believe and if your brain believes that the effort will actually help you succeed, you're much more likely to take proactive measures, such as studying the company, practicing common questions, refining your resume. This confidence reduces procrastination and increases motivation. But if you doubt your abilities, and even subconsciously if you doubt your abilities, your brain might create mental barriers, leading to procrastination and avoidance behaviors. Negative beliefs can trigger fear and anxiety, making it harder to focus and prepare effectively. Now, it's very well documented as something called the expectation effect. So in his book, Expectation Effect, David Robson found out that sham heart surgeries often worked just as well as placing real stents, or that people who think they were prone to cardiovascular diseases are four times as likely to die from cardiac arrest. Such is the power and deadly importance of this expectation effect. How what we think will happen, how what we think will change what does happen. How what we think will happen changes what will happen. If you expect to win, your brain will help your preparation and help you succeed. In intentional job search, we hack this with a practice called Firestarter in our programs. But it goes beyond that because sooner or later, shit hits the fan. You get rejections, you get negative feedback, and that's when the next thing comes in. This is my toolkit for product management. Scan it, make sure you check it out. It's a 10 minute video that will tell you all about what you need to do to succeed in product management. I'm compressing years of lessons, learning from other product managers in their careers. So make sure you check it out now. Bounciness. Now, have you ever seen these super bouncy balls that seem to bounce to an unexpected height? That's bounciness. Some people call it resilience. But I don't. Why? Because every time 
you hit an obstacle, I want you to jump back higher. Bouncedness determines whether you accelerate the job search or it slowly dies out, like many people's dreams. Rejections, negative feedback are just an integral part of this journey and they can be tough to handle. But each rejection can be viewed as an opportunity to learn and you can actually come out higher embracing this concept of bouncedness than if you just never faced those. So by refining your approach continuously, you can enhance your skills, your strategies, making you better prepared future opportunities. Now this, what people call growth mindset maybe, is vital. It helps you embrace the journey rather than being discouraged by obstacles. Basically, bouncedness ensures that the more rejections you get, the better it is for you. Embracing bouncedness can significantly increase your chances of success. It allows you to navigate the job market with confidence. Your optimism actually goes up as you spend more time on it and ultimately you achieve your career goals. This is a key differentiator in this competitive landscape of product management where the ability to stay motivated, persistent can make all the difference in getting to your dream role and advancing your career. Now you know mindset is important, you know bouncedness is important, but then what do you do about it? You use this tactic, what I call the thermostat reset. Okay, what's the thermostat reset? You do not need to assume you're a certain way. Yes, most people have a mental set point, like a thermostat does. As things get too warm, the air conditioning kicks in and it cools it down. So as things get too happy or positive, you literally create circumstances and emotions that cause you to reduce the temperature. I've seen this happen in many, many, many people. And if they get too cold, well, they figure out a way to just get slightly better, to cope with it some way. But here's the thing. While most people get to their set point, your thermostat can be changed intentionally by you. You are not the thermostat. You're the hand that controls it. You are not the thermostat. You're the hand that controls it. Write that in the comment. I want you to anchor it for you. There are intentional ways to jack up your thermostat. You can go from 70 to 80, or you cannot go from 70 to 80 right away, but you can get from 70 to 71 to 72, and you might drop back for a bit, but your thermostat, if it's a new set point, it brings it back. Again, in all our programs, we teach various tools from grateful visioning to radical acceptance to personas to what, what I mentioned earlier, fire started to get yourself going. But here's the ultimate, ultimate trick. Ultimately, there are two sets of beliefs you can have. And this kicked my ass a long time ago. One is what most people have. I will believe it when I, will, when I see it. They need to see the evidence of success before they believe that they can succeed. Or, I will see it when I believe it. I will see it when I believe it. It will happen only after I believe it. If I don't believe it, how do I ever expect to see the results? I used to be firmly number one, right? The first, first one. I needed to see it before I believed it. But then one of my coaches introduced me to number two. And that's when things started to shift for me I believed I could succeed in my career. I believed I could build this business while working at Google and then transition it into full-time. I could have it all. While all of this is important, here's the thing. Many people are doing it, but then they miss another key piece that affects them, which is that bouncedness thrives on support on other people. Don't go through this journey alone. You have to surround yourself with a support system. Friends, family, peers, mentors, coaches, these people can provide encouragement and perspective, something that's very hard to do on your own. But here's the important thing, joining a community of like-minded professionals can also offer invaluable support because they're going through these challenges. I mean, consistently talking to some of my clients who talk about our community, here's, listen to some of them. I got so much support within this community. Mm -hmm. And I made so many friends and especially when I get those rejections, like some of these people would be like, don't worry, it's going to be fine. What else can we yeah. do? Let's get on it. And that I think people really underestimate. Of course, like the skills, the resume, the strategies, it's all there. And, and yeah. IJS will give you more and above all of that. But I think the mindset part is really something that I really undervalued when I came in. I was like, whatever mindset, like, fine, I'm good. I'm good. I have a great mindset. <laughs> I'm a go getter. <laughs> but 
But I was like, no, I think let's not just underestimate this. Let's see where it goes. And I think the visualization, like all of those things, mm -hmm. I think it's it was really helpful mm -hmm. uh, because this journey is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And there's a lot of ebbs and flows. And I'm very emotional. Like whenever there would be a final round of rejection, I'd be like, oh, it's all over. But this is so much effort. It's done. And, and then, but then that's where your mindset kicks in. And mm -hmm. then okay, it's on to the next one. And that's where I think you, Shobit, the community was so important. Even if it's like reflecting on that rejection and, and talking through it in a very, mm -hmm. I won't say dispassionate way. It's a very like empathetic, caring way, but yeah. also in a constructive way it was all really great. But why does this work? Because when you see others struggle and succeed, you build these beliefs. You're no longer dependent on yourself for a reference. You can get this reference of the possible success and your ability to bounce from others. And then of course, and that helps you succeed much, much quicker. But then of course, there is the last point. If you're enjoying this content so far, make sure to hit the like and the subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next video that we put out. Perhaps the most crucial, which is the matrix of your life. What's the matrix of your life? What scientists call the reticular activating system. What's a reticular activating system, you might ask? Well, it's a network of neurons located in your brainstem that plays a crucial role in controlling attention, arousal, sleep-awake cycle. And one of the most fascinating functions is its ability to filter and prioritize the vast amount of sensory information that we receive every second, allowing us to focus on what's most important. I mean, just, just think about it. Like right now, there's like so much visual clutter I can focus on that my cat is sitting there and I, and I could just like, you know, look at her looking outside. It's a whole bunch of things. But something needs to filter the information, right? And that's where the RAS or the reticular activating system comes in because it acts as a gatekeeper for the information that we process. It filters out unnecessary background noise and highlights information that's relevant to us. Second, it helps us set up priorities. Our thoughts, beliefs, and goals are heavily influenced by the RAS. And when we focus on consciously, whatever we focus on becomes a priority for RAS. And it makes us more aware of related information and opportunities. Now, what does that mean for you? It's, this is a critical piece. Whatever you focus on, your mind finds more of it. And, and whatever you ignore, because of certain things that I'll talk about, your mind just like, it's like sort of it doesn't exist, even if it does in the world. So you're not seeing the world as is, you're seeing the world as you are. So the critical piece is, the RAS determines whether you think the world is a friendly place or it is full of dangers. And that's critical because I've seen so many of my clients succeed because they just sought out help from friendly people and they found friendly people everywhere and that was only because they were open to finding them rather than others who just like had this shut that go, cool, I'm out of a job. I got to like power through, figure it out on my own and nobody's going to help me out. Like sometimes they even, they paid us tons of money and they didn't even ask us for help while they could have. So by understanding this matrix of your life, you can effectively filter out distractions, focus on goals. And you can find opportunities that align with your career aspirations much, much faster. You can find people that are going to help you much, much faster. And this transforms your job search, making it targeted, efficient, and successful. So remember, your job search is a mental game. And watch out for these hidden challenges that could affect you. If you need help in overcoming these challenges in your job search, scan this QR code and book a consultation call with us so we can unlock your full potential together. Now that was the mental part, but there's a lot of other things you need to do to succeed in your job search. I recorded a full video of what I would do if I was looking for a job in this environment of 2024. Click the link here and watch this video and learn a lot.